Lesson 1.2 is intercepts, symmetry, and graphing. So a little review, x-intercepts is where your graph crosses the x-axis and y, the, where the y-coordinate is equal to zero. And y-intercepts is where a graph intersects the y-axis, where the x-coordinate is equal to zero. So here's an example. We have y equals x squared minus 4. That's a parabola. And we want to find the x and y-intercepts. So if we want to find the x-intercept, then we know that y is equal to zero. So I'm going to substitute y in my equation and for zero. And so I get zero is equal to x squared minus four. So go ahead and pause the video and solve for x. So you should have gotten that zero is equal to x squared minus four, which means four is equal to x squared. So if you take the square root or you just think what squared is equal to four, don't forget you have positive and negative two. Negative two squared is four and positive two squared is four. So you end up with two x-intercepts. I graph them over here in red. So now go ahead and pause the video and find the y-intercepts of the graph. So y-intercepts occur when x is equal to 0, so I replaced x with 0, so you end up with y is equal to 0 squared minus 4, or y is equal to negative 4. So I plotted that point right here, and now we want to graph this just by connecting the dots. So remember, x-intercepts occur when y equals 0, and y-intercepts occur when x is equal to 0. The next thing we're going to talk about is symmetry. So symmetry means that all points have a reflection or mirror point across a particular line. So in this class, we look at three types of symmetry. The first is x-axis symmetry, which says that for every point x, y on a graph, then x negative y also exists. So for instance, if you have a point up here in the first quadrant, then you have a reflection across the x-axis down here, positive y and negative y for the same x value has to exist. The way we test this is we replace every y with a negative y in the equation and see if it simplifies down to an equivalent equation. The next thing that we look at is y-axis symmetry. So this symbol means for every. For every x, y you, point you have, the negative x, y also exists in the equation. So you have the same y-coordinate, but opposite x-coordinates. So the test for that is you replace every x with a negative x and see if it simplifies down the same equation. The last one is origin. So can it be rotated 180 degrees? So if you have a point x, y, then every point negative x, negative y also exists. So they're across. If you have one in quadrant one, you have one in quadrant three. If you have one in quadrant two, you have one in quadrant four. Then our test for that, as probably makes sense, is you replace both x and y with their opposites and see if the equation simplifies down. So now we're going to try an example of testing an equation algebraically to see if it has symmetry. So our equation is y equals 4x squared divided by x squared plus 1, and we want to know what type or types of symmetry does this equation have, if it has any. So whenever you're testing symmetry, you always have to test all three types. So first we're going to test y-axis symmetry. Excuse me. First we're going to test x-axis symmetry. X-axis symmetry said that if you have a positive y, you also have a negative y. So to test this, we replace every y in the original equation with a negative y and see if the equation simplifies down to the original equation. So we ended up with negative y is equal to 4x squared divided by x squared plus 1. There's no way we can manipulate this to make this look like the original. So this one does not have x-axis symmetry. So now we're going to try y-axis symmetry. Y-axis symmetry said for every positive x, you also had a negative x. So we're, our test is we're going to replace every x with an opposite of x. So we have 4 times the quantity x, negative x squared over negative x quantity squared plus 1, and all that's equal to y. Well, negative x quantity squared is just the same thing as positive x squared. So your numerator simplifies down to 4x squared. Your denominator simplifies down to x squared plus 1. So this was the exact same thing as the original. It matched it back down to the original. So this one does, in fact, have y-axis symmetry. The last one was origin symmetry, which for said for every positive x, you had a negative x, and every positive y, you had a negative y. So go ahead and pause the video and try to see if this has origin symmetry. So we replace every x with a negative x, and we replace every y with a negative y, 
and simplify. Again, your negative x quantity squared just become positive x squared, but there's nothing you can do with this negative y. So you end up with the same thing that you ended up with on the x-axis sym symmetry, so this one does not have origin symmetry. So for this equation, it only has x-axis symmetry. When you do these, you always have to test all three because they could have zero all the way up to all three of them. So make sure you always test all three. To do this graphically, for this equation, you could just plug it in your graphing calculator. Make sure you put parentheses around the denominator and see what it looks like on your graphing calculator. And then you can decide what kind of symmetry it has. So here we have three what we call parent functions, y equals x cubed, y equals square root of x, and y equals 1 over x. These are all functions that you need to know how to be able to graph. So without your calculators, put your graphing calculators away. Plot points if you don't know what these look like, but go ahead and pause the video and try and sketch a graph as accurately as possible of these three graphs and note what kind of symmetry they have. So for the first one, y equals x cubed, whatever your x coordinate is, your y coordinate is cubed of that. So you end up with negative 2, negative 8, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1 and 2, 8, and so you end up with a curve that looks like this. For this one, it does not have x-axis symmetry. There are points up here that don't have points down here. It does not have y-axis symmetry. There are points on the right that don't match points on the left, but it does, in fact, have origin symmetry. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and pause the video and do y equals the square root of x. So for y equals square root of x, I chose easily square-rooted numbers. So for my x-coordinates, I pick 0, 1, 4, and 9 because they're all perfect squares. So their matching y-coordinates were 0, 1, 2, and 3. So you end up with a little curve that looks like this. For this one, there's no symmetry. There's no matching over the x-axis, there's no matching over the y-axis, and there's no matching over the origin. So this one has no symmetry at all. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and pause the video and try y equals 1 over x. So in this one, I pick some points over here, and you end up with these curves in both the first quadrant and in the third quadrant. We'll talk about this graph a little bit more in a couple chapters, but it actually has asymptote lines both on y equals 0 and on x equals 0. If you look at it, you see there's no x-axis symmetry, there's no y-axis symmetry, but it does have origin symmetry. So make sure you can be able to find symmetry, whether it has x, y, and or origin symmetry, both algebraically and by looking at a graph, and make sure you can plot points and graph a function.